On the 23rd of May 1960, a massive earthquake struck the coast of Chile. This 9.5 magnitude earthquake is the largest ever recorded. The earthquake devastated southern Chile and generated a tsunami with run-ups of 25 metres near the epicentre. The red bars show the relative height of the tsunami run-up. The wave struck shores right across the Pacific. It was observed right along the coast of the Americas. In the Hawaiian Islands, damage was particularly severe with 61 deaths. The worst hit area, Hilo, was struck by a 10.7 metre bore. Japan was struck by waves of up to 6 metres high, causing 199 deaths. Most Pacific Islands recorded the tsunami, with run-ups of 3.4 metres in Tahiti. In New Zealand, tsunami run-ups of up to 4.5 metres occurred, and there was damage to many boats and harbour facilities, as well as some land inundation and losses of livestock. Whilst not as damaging as elsewhere in the Pacific, the tsunami was noted right across the Australian coastline in Cairns, Townsville, Mackay, Brisbane and Coolangatta in Queensland, Wilson's Promontory in Victoria, Hobart in Tasmania, Port Macdonald in South Australia and Fremantle in Western Australia. In New South Wales, an extensive search has yielded more information on the effects of the tsunami. Here, blue bars represent the maximum tsunami amplitude where it was measured or observed. A square represents a tsunami observation where no amplitude was recorded. Also shown in this flyby are reproductions of tide recordings that show the passage of the tsunami over time. On Lord Howe Island, the tsunami was recorded on the tide gauge with a maximum amplitude of 34 centimetres. The tsunami was noted at Tweed Heads, where the high tide was well above normal. At Brunswick Heads, equipment being used in the construction of a bridge was damaged, though it is unknown whether this was due to the tsunami. On the Richmond River at Ballina, the tsunami was noted by locals and recorded by the tide gauge. The maximum amplitude measured was 18 centimetres around midday, 14 hours after the tsunami was first recorded. At Evans Head, a 1.2 metre wave swept over the bar and up the river. Three fishing trawlers broke their moorings and were swept aground. At Woody Head, a 1.2 metre wave swept ashore and seven fishermen had to run for their lives. The truck they were loading at the time was left half buried in the sand. The tide gauge at Luca recorded a maximum amplitude of 32 centimetres. At Coffs Harbour, the tide gauge recorded a maximum amplitude of half a metre. The tsunami was noted by fishermen at Numbucca Heads, Scott's Head and Stewart Point. They observed minor irregularities in the tides. On southwest Rocks Creek, fishermen saw the tsunami wash fishing boats 90 metres upstream. The tsunami was noted by fishermen at Het Head. One who was fishing in very shallow water experienced the water rise rapidly to waist level. At Port Macquarie, the maximum amplitude observed was 0.8 metres. One fishing jetty was destroyed and several others damaged. The swimming baths, a fenced off section of the river, was completely destroyed. The tsunami was noted at Laurenton and at Old Bar, on the entrance of the Manning River. Newspapers reported no noticeable effects on Port Stephens, though one oyster farmer in Swan Bay did notice a small change in the water level due to the tsunami. There was some variation in the observed and measured tsunami amplitudes in Newcastle Harbour, ranging from 38 centimetres to 0.9 metres. In Throsby Inlet, the tsunami tore more than a dozen small craft from their moorings and sank a 24-foot fishing boat. Further up the Hunter River at Hexham, a collier ran aground. Local officials attributed the grounding to the effects of the tsunami. In the Swansea Channel, some swell in the water was observed and a roaring sound was heard. The tsunami was noted at many locations on Broken Bay and the Lower Hawkesbury River. The effects and observations varied significantly from one location to another. At Wagstaff, on the Brisbane waters, the tsunami broke moorings. In the pit water, the tsunami was observed at Bayview and at Newport. At Bobbin Head, approximately 22 kilometres from the mouth of the Hawkesbury River, the maximum amplitude was 86 centimetres, and some boats broke from their moorings. The amplitude here was higher than anywhere else on Broken Bay. Damage was reported to oyster leases near Brooklyn, which were undermined by the tsunami. Many reports came from Port Jackson. At 40 Baskets Beach, across from Port Jackson from Manly, the tsunami caused the water level to change from that of a very high tide to a very low tide. Off Balmoral Beach, a sailing instructor in a small boat recalled riding over a 4.3 metre wave. 
No similar heights were observed nearby, but it is possible that this was a highly localised effect. The Spit, a very narrow section of Middle Harbour, was one of the most affected areas in Sydney. While some waves and changes in water level were observed, it was the strong currents that caused the majority of the damage. They were estimated to be up to 30 knots. About 30 boats and two or three large barges broke their moorings. One barge was carried underneath a split bridge, ripping off its jib crane. Damage to another boat which hit the bridge was also reported. Most of the newspapers reported a giant whirlpool sweeping boats in unpredictable directions. One of the most significant observations was the amount of scouring that occurred in the area. A large section of Clontarf Beach was eroded. The scouring exposed a high-tension electricity cable and high-pressure gas pipeline which had been buried underneath the channel. In addition to Clontarf Beach, there was scouring observed on the bottom and other sides of the channel. A young girl who was standing on the beach at Clontarf fell over the crumbling edge and had to be rescued by two bystanders. Reports from Sydney Harbour were concentrated around Balmain and Glebe. Here damage was also due to the strong currents caused by the tsunami. In Iron Cove, approximately 13 kilometres from Sydney Heads, 800 logs at a sawmill broke from their moorings. Tugs called in to retrieve the logs had trouble negotiating the strong currents. At Glebe, boats were swept rapidly through the Glebe Island Bridge by the swift currents. A punt loaded with Oregon timber was sunk when the rapid change in the water level caused it to be caught underneath a wharf. Here are the tide recordings from the Fort Denison and Camp Cove tide recorders. They recorded maximum amplitudes of 41 and 18 centimetres respectively. The tsunami was observed as a small series of waves at Picnic Point on the Georges River, 28 kilometres from the mouth of Botany Bay. The tide gauge at Cronulla recorded a maximum amplitude of 69 centimetres. One of the few reports of injury came from North Cronulla Beach, where a boy was knocked into a seawall by the wave as he was attempting to climb it to escape. In Port Hacking, the tsunami affected the Bandina Ferry in Gunnamatta Bay. Some damage was reported to private wharves and maritime beacon. The tsunami was noted at Port Kembla, but no damage or disruption was recorded. Local fishermen saw the tsunami at a number of locations on the Shoalhaven River and its tributaries, including Rimmel Point near Shores Creek and on Broughton Creek near Berry. In Jervis Bay, damage was reported to a breakwater, though it is unknown whether this was caused by the tsunami. In Aladulla, the rapidly rising water assisted in launching a trawler out of its cradle. Batemans Bay was one of the most significantly impacted locations in New South Wales, it experienced one of the largest unconfirmed wave heights, the largest amount of reported damage, and the only report of land inundation. Estimates of the maximum altitude range from 60 to 84 centimetres. Some erosion occurred on the northern side of the bay at the caravan park. The tsunami washed up to 50 metres along the road here. On the southern side of the bay, the wave broke over the seawall behind the house of the postmaster. These locations are prone to inundation in heavy seas. Thousands of pounds of oysters were lost due to the tsunami impact. The majority of one lease, consisting of approximately 70 trays, was lost due to silt stirred up by the tsunami. Boats were also torn from their moorings. At Malua Bay, on the southern side of Batemans Bay, an unconfirmed account reported a maximum amplitude of 2 to 2.7 metres. Such a large wave height was not noted elsewhere in the bay, but it may have been a highly localised effect. At Nelligen, approximately 14 kilometres upstream of Batemans Bay, the tsunami washed the ferry ashore and refloated it as the water level rose and fell. The tsunami was noted on Kendalagan Creek near Browlee, Maria, and Marimbula Lake, but there were no reports of damage. The Eden tide gauge measured the largest amplitude of any tide gauge on the New South Wales coast. It was 85 centimetres. Some damage was reported to scaffolding around a wharf, and fishing activities were also disrupted. Further details and analysis of the impacts of this tsunami can be found in the report Measurements and Impacts of the Chilean Tsunami of May 1960 in New South Wales, Australia, which is included on this DVD.